Hello there and welcome into another JMAC Snack. Today we want to answer the question, why does the White House insist on setting the worst COVID example possible? Why? Oh, why? Now, I don't know how long this JMAC Snack is going to be because I just have one video I want to share with you and one response and we'll see how it goes. So it could be rather quick. But I was watching this White House press briefing I've seen the stories of, I think, Bill Barr having a Christmas party at the White House, 900 people attending. They're planning on having all of these Christmas festivities. And of course, they're being asked by the media, are you going to be following COVID restrictions? And should you really be having these gatherings when we were just encouraged by Dr. Fauci and the CDC to avoid big gatherings for Thanksgiving. And so now Christmas is upon us. And are you really in the White House after having a super spreader event? Are you really going to repeat those same things? And the answer is apparently yes. But of course, this White House has been silent on the COVID uh, pandemic, except for when word came out that there was going to be a vaccine, President Trump rushed out to take credit for it. And I give him credit for it. Although the Pfizer vaccine was not part of Operation Warp Speed, the others were. And so I'm I'm more than willing to give him credit for that. But, you know, taking credit for a vaccine while at the same time encouraging uh, just terrible behavior during a pandemic to me, it's just an example why the guy should not be president. He could be the leader of a company. He can build hotels. He can manage teams. He can do all of those things. But that doesn't mean that he's a good leader in all cases, in all situations. And when it comes to COVID, I give the guy a D minus. And this this, uh, press briefing with Kayla McEnany, What she says to justify why they're going to do this, she uses two tactics here. And I think they're both disgusting. And that's why I wanted to share them with you. So I want you to listen to her response. You'll hear the question from the member of the media. And then I really want you to key in on the logic that she's using. Listen up. Real quick, uh, the CDC director today said that the next few months could be among the worst uh, public health months in American history. I wonder, does the White House, is it setting a good example for the public for the White House to be holding in-person holiday parties at a time when uh, the CDC and other organizations are asking Americans to forego those kinds of celebrations for their own safety? Yeah, so, you know, if you can um, loot businesses, burn down buildings, engage in protest, um, you can also go to a Christmas party. Um, You can celebrate the holiday of Christmas, um, and you can do it responsibly, um, which is why uh, the East Wing has noted that they'll have smaller guest lists, masks are going to be available, social distancing is going to be encouraged, um, hand sanitizing stations, among other measures. Um, But we will engage in the celebration of Christmas, um, and there, there will be a Hanukkah celebration as well. All right, so, (laughs) oh, all I can say is, wow. Did you catch her logic? Did you, I'm going to play the beginning for you one more time. Real quick, uh, the CDC director today said that the next few months could be among the worst uh, public health months in American history. I wonder, does the White House, is it setting a good example for the public for the White House to be holding in-person holiday parties at a time when... Uh, the CDC and other organizations are asking Americans to forego those kinds of celebrations for their own safety. Here it comes. Yeah, so, you know, if you can um, loot businesses, burn down buildings, engage in protest, um, you can also go to a Christmas party. The, um, you can celebrate. Are you... This is the kind of logic that I experience in social media comments. Not from the freaking White House. She says if you can loot and protest and riot during a pandemic, then we can have a Christmas party. How many of you heard that and went, she's exactly right? Back up for a minute here. When you saw looting, rioting, 
and protest during the pandemic? What did you say? What did you think? What did they say? What did Kaylee McEnany say? You should be doing that during a pandemic. They had the nerve to say that. Now, for rioting and looting, you should never be doing that. Protesting during a pandemic and not social distancing, you got to find a better way. And it was broadly and widely condemned. Now, we're in this strange, bizarro world where we now think we can take the actions that we have condemned and we can use them to justify our own poor, crappy behavior. It is literally saying two wrongs make a right. Literally, that's exactly what she is saying here because she condemned those activities. So what she should be saying is not you can, but you shouldn't. So if I was letterman from electric company, I would come in and I would change some letters around and I would say that what she should be saying, if her logic would stand any muster whatsoever, is you should not riot, you should not loot, you should not protest during a pandemic, and therefore we in the White House are not going to engage in behavior that potentially becomes a super spreader event. You see, that's the only way the logic makes sense. You can't sit there like a child and say, because they're despicable, we're going to be despicable. If we allow that logic, then we can justify every poor behavior ever known to man. This is what children do. See, you started it, and so I'm going to do the same thing. This is the entire methodology of Donald Trump. Well, I'm going to attack them because they attack me. But it holds no logic. This is not what adults do. This is not what leaders do. <laughs> Again, the correct statement is we saw a bad example of what to do during a pandemic. We condemned that example and we are going to demonstrate good leadership and thought and care for our fellow man and we're going to set a proper example. Instead, they said you saw a crappy example and so we're going to be crappy. That's her first tactic. Her second tactic is the religion card that somehow religion requires that you ignore the pandemic. Somehow the only way to celebrate Christmas is through big gatherings. Somehow that's what Christmas requires or Hanukkah. That's what it requires. When there's a pretty strong argument that would suggest that if Christ were around and his teachings were not about government or politics or civil liberties, he only cared about how we think and what we think of others and how we should go out of our way for others, regardless of whether or not we agree with them or not, and that we should love them and care for them. And I'm assuming to do so with their you know, to care for their lives. So it is remarkable to me, the demand that we must celebrate this religious holiday. It would be wrong not to. When you look at the core teachings of that religion, you have to ask the question, is that loving your neighbor and caring for your neighbor? I'll let you answer that question. But these two tactics to me are horrendous. You can, my friends, celebrate a holiday at home with your family for one year. You can 
celebrate Christmas at home with your family for one year. It's possible. And you can do so because you love your neighbor. It's possible. I promise you it's possible. But this whole two wrongs make a right justification we really are becoming children. I can't believe these words came out of her face. I really can't. So this J-Max snack was a little bit longer than I thought it would be. Please take a minute and become a patron of this broadcast. Scan the QR code on the screen. You can pause it, scan it. That will take you to where you can become a monthly patron with a monthly donation or a one-time donation. Everything that you can do will help me continue to bring you this information on a regular basis. With that, more snacks to come, and I hope you have a great day.